YouTube family, what's the deal? It's your boy Chris McLean Cliff of Cliff World TV. And y'all already know how I'm rocking family. And today, we're going to investigate when the blood gang affiliation became a fad in hip hop. Or is it truly authentic? I don't know, but I know what y'all can do. Sit back, get your doobie, kick back like we finna watch a movie. It's where Chris McLean Cliff Dog of Cliff World TV. We finna get straight into it. Hip hop has had many fads throughout its 50 years of existence. From rocking boom boxes on the shoulder to wearing parachute pants and even skinny jeans. A trend that I'm thankful is coming to an end. But no fad has had more of a stronghold on the culture than the blood gang affiliation fad now. Now before everybody get in the comment section and start declaring that their favorite artist affiliation is indeed real, let's just take a brief moment and go over where the relationship with gang culture and hip hop even begun. Now, to my best of knowledge, and this is, of course, only my opinion, the fascination with gang culture and music began 20 years after the identity of both the Bloods and the Crips were formed, with the Crips being founded in 1969 and the Pyrus in 1972. To my best understanding, gang culture would have started influencing hip-hop right around the year 1993 with the introduction of Banging on Wax, which was released March 9th, 1993 by an independent record label named Dangerous Records. Banging on Wax would actually peak on the Billboard Top 200 Albums chart in 1993. So needless to say, this album most definitely made a cultural impact, whether it was for the good or the bad. It seemed like every hood in America had a copy of Long Pyru Love would personally be responsible for introducing ghettos all around America to specific street names, parks, and sets that were all under the blood umbrella. Bloody Mary, she would instantly start her verse off by calling the city of Compton, Bompton, which would set the tone for the track while rapping on the Zappin' Roger instrumental for computer love. Bloody Mary would begin by naming off sets, parks, and streets. She would begin with saying that Lime Hood, a set after the street Lime Street in Compton, was down with the mob, also another blood set in Compton. After that, she'd go on to explain how another blood set named Hollywood in Compton was also down with the blood. In fact, this is actually where Indian Red Boy was originally from. He was actually originally from Hollywood, and then he went over to be from Englewood families. Bloody Mary would also go on to say that Cross Atlantic was down with the bloods too. Cross Atlantic being the set, off of Bompton Boulevard, again, replacing the C for a B. A common thing done amongst Bloods and Pyrus. She would go on to say that every town has an Elm Street, but not a Freddy Krueger, which Elm was a set as well. She had also mentioned the Ludus Park Pyrus, one of the oldest, if not the oldest Pyru set in LA County. Ghettos all around the nation would start to pay attention to exactly what was going on with the gangs in Los Angeles, California. Some cities around America would even adopt the names that was mentioned in Bloody Mary's verse. Yeah, man. They actually started to name their sets after Bloody Mary's verse on Pyro Love, and they started their own version of the gang in their city. Now, don't get me wrong. Gangs in Los Angeles had already planted their seeds in the rich soils found here in America, and the roots would sprout out and spread throughout the entire United States by the year 1993 by ways of drug pipelines connected by interstates and highways. Gangs had already spread it to places like Little Rock, Arkansas. One day we was chilling on the street called 23rd. <laughs> we all grew up together. We all Crips, right? All our homies came down here, like from California, anywhere. They came down here and got with us. Yeah. They joined yeah, with us. Yeah, that's right. You know, Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> OG 43rd, man. <laughs> we from the home of the fishbowl. Free all the niggas that's gone. A lot of niggas be looking at Fort Worth and they be like, okay, the south side is hoopling and ugling. The same thing now, cause we ugling. Ugling is the south side. It ain't nothing but Crips and gangsta hardheads on the south side. Nothing else. St. Louis. Neighborhood crew. I just uh. I just went to Cali, you know, I'm from St. Louis. And the gang originated, origi originated in Cali, it's originally from Cali. Now I went over there. It wasn't just like no hop out, take a picture, hear him pull off. Like I tapped in, I got their numbers in my phone, linked up with them. They, they took me in. 
Because yeah. in Cali, it's like red and blue blood crit, right? Yeah. But your shit is named after. Great. Great. Street out here. Oh, it's a street out here. Yeah, great street out here. It's a great street crit. It's, in, it's in Watts. You see them great, you can't tell them not great. And the list goes on and on. It wasn't until 1993, though, the gang culture in hip hop would explode like wildfire. And it can still be found in the culture to this very day. One might also contribute gangs being and playing hip hop much earlier than this. And this could be true. NWA started the gangster rap genre. And it is true that they face the group Easy E was affiliated with the Kelly Park Compton Crips located in Compton, California. Yes, this is all true. But it wasn't until 1993 that specific gangs were mentioned by name, streets, and parks. Oh, yes. The rest of America would be introduced to exactly what's going on in Los Angeles, California by way of cassette tapes. Now, I know a lot of this is up for speculation, and I can't speak on the music of the 60s and the 70s, but uh, hey, they even got a famous picture of Michael Jackson chunking up a seat with some neighborhood crips in 1989. This is all true. As a matter of fact, Michael Jackson even had a song called Blue Gangsta. So, hey, man, uh, maybe Mike was a crip. I don't know. But what I do know is that in 1993, that would also be the same year that Long Beach, California idol and crip Snoop Doggy Dog was signed to Death Row Records. Ran by the notorious Compton My Paru member, Marion Suge Knight. Marion Suge Knight was a convicted felon and a gang member that actually had a professional football career prior to him founding Death Row Records. Suge actually played for UNLV as a defensive end, and he would also briefly play in the NFL for the Los Angeles Rams as a replacement player during the 1987 NFL strike. After that, he had become a security guard for entertainers, giving himself an inside glimpse on the music industry. Well, to make a long story short, of course, Suge would go on to start Death Row Records, acquiring the best producer in the game at that time, Dr. Dre, and signing the best two artists in the game at that time, Snoop Dogg and Tupac. But he would also hire members of the Looters Park Parus and Mob Parus as staff members, man. Members like Mob James and his brother Buntry. In fact, WAC 100 even says that he was around Suge Knight around them times. This, in my opinion, would be the beginning of gangs having influence over hip hop culture. Suge Knight, as we all know now, is presently serving a 20 year sentence for allegedly running someone over at a film production movie shoot. While during the heydays of Death Row, Snoop Dogg, unlike his predecessor, Easy E, would let it be known that he was a Long Beach, California crip. Now, I'm not saying that Easy e didn't rep the set because he definitely did in his own subtle ways. I'm just conveying to y'all that Snoop and the crip identity to the rest of us in the world, outside of LA, has always gone hand in hand. It is in my opinion that Snoop Dogg made crips popular in general, but it was actually Suge Knight who I credit with directly entwining gang culture within the fabrics of hip hop. Now, although it was well known that Tupac Shakur was not a gangster, and in fact, he was born in East Harlem, New York. He even lived in Baltimore, Maryland sometime before moving to Oakland. Suge's lure and influence was so strong over the poetic, conscious, yet revolutionary rapper that we started to see Pac wearing red bandanas quite often. We all watched as Pac went from a conscious rapper, performer with Digital Underground, to being released from prison and signing the death row and changing his whole persona. We even saw the rapper start wearing red bandanas and adapt the attitude of the gang members that was around him, which would prove to be fatal because as we all know by now, Pac was killed. Yet, the spirit of Suge Knight and death row is very much so still alive in hip hop. And then we have Beat Brazy. But where do retirement papers come in, blood? At what age do I turn into a 
kick back OG gangster or some old shit, man, that ain't gonna never happen, blood. I ain't even, my goals in life ain't to be an OG, period, nigga, for real, YG for life, for life huh, with him. I mean, on lanes, nigga, I'm an old YG, period. That's the best I could be. Best I could be. The OGs already had their time. The OGs is what they are. They are the OGs, original young gangsters. You know what I'm saying? That's what I am, original young gangster. They're the original gangsters. You know what I'm saying? Bloods, man. A Denver Lane Blood, born on 109th and Figueroa, and he made his interest in the rap game through being featured on the Bangin' on Wax compilation discussed earlier on in this segment. Brazy along with some more red rags like Lil Hawk, Spider, Pimp D, and Peanut Number 2 would all get together in September of 1995, exactly one year before the death of Tupac Shakur. B. Brazy and the Bloods would collaborate on the West Coast classic entitled Daimu Riders. He'd also be on Banging on Wax too. Besides Bloody Mary, B. Brazy was the most popular artist on the Banging on Wax saga. And although he never released the studio album, B. Brazy would make appearances on tracks with artists like Sugar Booger, Big Wilder Relatives, Mac 10. I mean, B. Brazy was just a charismatic and magnetic individual. And he seemed to have a promising career of entertainment, despite his gang affiliation being linked all the way back to the Denver Lane Bloods. In fact, Brazy is actually credited for starting a whoop whoop. Two phrase saying the Bloods have been famously known for shouting out upon greeting. I've even heard many artists from the blue side of the rag named Brazy as one of the top 10 dead or alive in LA. But unfortunately, May 9th, 2003, Due to gang affiliation and the ongoing racial war between the blacks and browns of Los Angeles, California, Bruce Anthony Paris Jr., also known as B. Brazy, was shot while he was sitting in the Sand Motel in Inglewood, California. He actually managed to make it outside where he would collapse and go into cardiac arrest. Paris was unconscious when the police and paramedics arrived. He was ultimately pronounced dead at the hospital. Now, it is rumored that a Latino woman had flirted with him from the club earlier that night, and she led Brazy back to the Sandman Hotel, where the Hispanic gang members were already set up, waiting for him. They shot him multiple times. His death would be felt across Los Angeles County and even Bordering County. He had so much respect that even his direct enemies would show up and show some love for the fallen soldier. Two years later, in the year 2005, the city of Inglewood would offer a $25,000 reward for any information leading to the arrest of B. Brazy. Now, there's a lot of online theories on Brazy's death, but we don't want to do that. We don't get to speculation on this channel. I just know that it's a fact that Brazy is beloved to this very day by the Denver Lanes and the PDLs. July 13, 2004. After many had speculated that Jim Jones and the Diplomats were gang affiliated, it wasn't until we seen Jim Jones link up with Rising Compton Cedar Block Pop Rule Superstar, The Game, on their certified gangster single. Jim Jones would be seen with red bandanas wrapped all over him, all while wearing the traditional dicky khaki pants with a red belt through each and every loop, signifying his allegiance to the B-side. The music video would have elements of Easy es Boys in the Hood single as you heard the old so familiar tunes of the synthesizer being laced through the melodic West Coast melodies. This was a single that had already been proven once to be ingredients for success. The music video itself actually took place in Los Angeles, California, where members of the Cedar Block Pyrus Games Gang can be seen with the Black Wall Street members and even the Booyah tribe flamed up in this motion picture, all while making it a parody of the movie Menace to Society. This gave us a first-hand insider perspective on how gangs in Los Angeles, California have effectively influenced the mecca of hip-hop, New York. Now, as I stated before, of course these gangs had traveled to states long before certified gangsters. But I mean, it wasn't up until this very moment in hip hop history that we all saw exactly how much influence the gangs really had over hip hop culture. I mean, just think about it. Eight years prior to making certified gangsters, 
The East Coast and the West Coast were at odds with each other. The East Coast don't love Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. The East Coast ain't got no love for Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and Death Row. Y'all don't love us. Y'all don't love us. Well, let it be known then. We, we know y'all East Coast. We know we at East Coast and F. Now the East Coast had California gangs creeping into the very molecular makeup of the Big Apple. October 5th, 2004. Just two months after the release of Certified Gangsters. During my eighth grade year in middle school in Little Rock, Arkansas, I vividly remember all of us leaving school that summer listening to Mike Jones and DSR. But when we returned back to school, the Carter had dropped and it seemed like overnight everybody went from listening to Chopped Screw music in Texas to Lil Wayne. Now, to give y'all viewers a bit of backdrop, a lot of y'all already know, but some of y'all don't. I'm born and raised in Little Rock, Arkansas, and some might even quote us as being the game bank capital of the South. So I think it's very important to add that uh, any affiliation in Arkansas with the Pie Rouge came much earlier than Lil Wayne. So imagine how it felt going to school the next day after watching Lil Wayne's Go DJ video. In the music video, Lil Wayne was seen walking the prison yard and standing on top of cafeteria tables like he run the place during what has seemed to be a prison riot. Now, there will be a scene in particular where Lil Wayne walks into what seems to be a shower room with a red bandana on his head. And as he exited the shower room with two female guards, he had let his hair down and threw up a signature beat linked to the Bloods and Pyrus. And when I tell y'all that my middle school was full of people calling Lil Wayne a fake blood, Y'all just don't understand. See, just like Los Angeles, kids growing up in Little Rock, Arkansas are kids to gangbangers. They were born into this, so it was kind of taboo to see their favorite artist turn into a blood in the middle of his successful career. Everybody who was the children of real gang members, they would take it personal that uh, Wayne would just make a transformation at such an age, and not only would he do that, we will come to later find out that Birdman, whom both him and Lil Wayne were both seen wearing blue bandanas, that Birdman too was claiming his affiliation to the Red Rag. Now, as we all know by now, Lil Wayne at the time was the hottest artist on the face of the planet. And he remained the hottest artist on the face of the planet for about 10 years. Lil Wayne becoming the blood literally shifted the culture unknowingly to him. He had officially made joining the blood gang a fad. Now, it is alleged that Lil Wayne has a brother by the name of Capo, who is from New Orleans, but he grew up in Los Angeles, and he was a real blood. Now, he'd bring the bloods back to his sector, and that'd be on the east side of New Orleans, on Apple and Eagle Street. But the real Damus in the land wasn't having it. Shoe really, really start and come within the hip hop aspect, because there's only certain cats in the hip hop game who came up in the game who were real down moves for the street, who changed their life musically and, and got involved with the music. He one of them. His whole clique. You know what I'm saying? His whole clique is one of them. Real thorough history. You know what I'm saying? So it's not a lot of cats in this game who was able to commercialize this shit on a Damu perspective like they did, and they did. And that's where our real issue came, from Lil Wayne motherfucking ass, first and foremost. Cause Lil Wayne never came out here in these streets and was initiated in these streets with us and was really accepted by us. When I say us, Damu's. Nigga, I know for a fact you was a fucking great street cause I saved you niggas. I went and saved them niggas from a robbery, bro, in 92. They was at a goddamn record store and they don't know they was finna get robbed because I was in the Jordan Downs at the parking lot, fucking with the goddamn baby low niggas when the shit was being talked about. Son was Jim Jones. Should I call him by his government name? Nah, I ain't gonna do you like that. I ain't gonna do you like that. We had a conversation. Real talk. You know, we have a, we had a conversation. Where as a man, not even a blood, and, he, and you ain't no blood, homie. You got blessed, but you paid your way to be part of this. I don't give a damn how much money you got. You still got to answer to somebody. There's always somebody over you. There is protocol. 
You cannot do what you want to do. And before you go around putting me or any of the army, other homies on your shit, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. I ain't got a dime in Mexican money. I ain't got a wet food stamp. I mean, that's how you respect me. That's how you pay homage to me. Why didn't you just ask me? Respect the hood, respect the homies. And you don't do that, dog. You don't. Lil Wayne would be subject to scrutiny when it came down to his blood affiliation for many, many years. And that was up until the point of him having to serve eight months in Rikers Islands in 2010 for a drug and gun possession stemming from an arrest made prior to that year on his tour bus. Lil Wayne is a free man now. He was released from Rikers Island after serving eight months for having a loaded gun on a tour bus. He originally received a year-long sentence as part of a plea bargain for attempted weapons possession, but he was released early on good behavior. According to the Grammy winner's management, he plans to return to his Miami home. It seems Lil Wayne's career did not suffer all that much while he was behind bars. His latest album released in September and hit number one. While serving time at Rikers, notorious for holding the nine trade bloods, sex money murder, and G-shines, Lil Wayne was pressed and G-checked by a ranking member in Rikers that ultimately give him the okay that Wayne was good. Sheesh. Now, after that, I even myself kind of accepted Wayne as a blood. I'm not even going to lie, man, but uh, yeah, man, I hate to say it, Weezy. You the one started the bloods being a trend and a fad in hip-hop, sad to say. October 10th, 2007. A crusty-lipped Gucci Mane LaFleur would be seen somewhere in the trenches of Atlanta, Georgia with a much younger version of Waka Flocka Flame for his music video, My Kitchen. Now, up until this point, YouTube family, I personally, me, I can't speak for everybody else, I personally only knew Atlanta to be this trapping-ass city made popular by the Freaknik Festival, amongst other attractions and artists like Outkast, Goody Mob, Jermaine Dupree, Jazzy Faye, and the Yin Yang Twins. Atlanta, for the most part, seemed like a fun place to be. And after the release of the movie ATL, starring West Side Atlanta's very own Clifford Harris, aka Tip, the depiction of Atlanta in the movie ATL at that time was bubbly and fun. Wasn't nothing about no gangs. Or no blood members, but on the song My Kitchen by Gucci Mane, he declared his affiliation with the blood identity by stating that he was a blood in, blood out member speaking, all while saying he was from the east side of Atlanta, Boulder Crest to be exact. Now, of course, around this same time, we saw young Jeezy hanging out with the Crips, and of course, Snoop and Corrupt, they always held it down for the blue team, in which case, I'm going to make a part two to this video with the blue side. The same exact thing with the blue side because, man, they experienced a fad themselves, especially at the end of the year with uh, Tony Woodridge. But uh, let's move on. Now, with Gucci Mane declaring his affiliation to the Bloods, it seemed as though the streets of Atlanta would suddenly have a rise in blood numbers. While Gucci was locked up, his protege slash bodyguard slash shooter Waka Flocka Flame would emerge from the background and becoming the main player. Waka would come in the game letting it be known from the gate that he was a Pyro member. And it was even rumored that after falling off with Kibo Gotti in the Grove Street Bloods in Atlanta, Georgia, that Waka would take a flight to the motherland and get actually put on with the Elm Street Pyro. On a whole other separate occasion, we seen Waka Flocka Flame with the founder of the Los Angeles Black Peace Stones, Triple OG, T. Rogers. So, uh, remember what I talked about? Sometimes you, sometimes me, always us. One, two, one, two. Forgive me. T. Rogers, a man that had been a part of the Stone Rangers branch in Chicago, and he had later moved to Los Angeles in the Baldwin Hills, aka the Jungles. Walker was seen with T. Rogers in the Jungles for the Hard to Paint music video, and it seemed that Walker would get the approval from the land, validating his affiliation. But after that, oh man, after that, things started to get weird. 
Now, I guess it's important that I note that there are plenty reputable bloods in the rap game. Most are coming from the land, like Joe Moses, Mr. RJ, Mr. LA, the Baby Stone Gorillas, Mitchie Slick, Messy Marv, J Rock, The Game, Y3 Capone, Wally the Sensei, and many more, but there are also reputable bloods outside of LA, like Mozzie, Briss, YFN Lucha, Sauce Walker, Honeycomb Brazy, so on and so forth. But let's go ahead and get to where it started getting weird. Now, somewhere around 2011, 2012, it got real questionable, or rather these sets that these rappers was claiming was actually authentic and really in it, or was it just a facade? Lil Wayne would experience a bit of pushback whenever he was in California for music video shoots. Spider Loke would go viral for basically pressing Lil Wayne and Birdman to exit their armed vehicle. Spider Loke said it, nigga, what's happening? Get these niggas good. Get these bitch ass niggas face, cuz. What's truck they in? Slim and baby in this one, cuz, right here, cuz. Whole ass niggas. niggas talk all that shit. You bitch ass niggas. Hey, nigga, that's all we came back. It's Crip, nigga. Food chain, hey, Food chain nigga. Coach Crip, 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 nigga. Game bag again. 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 Game had uh, this one dude on the cover and he said uh, like you and, and some other dudes like surrounded Lil Wayne or something in LA like well uh, like and we saw like a little video on the internet it was kind of real fuzzy and stuff for like 40 Glock and uh, a lot of dudes screaming. Oh wow back in Georgia there was footage of some Crips pressing up on Waka Flocka Flank. <laughs> Waka Flocka stood tall, of course, and uh, Wayne, well, he didn't get out the car. So for the next few years, we saw artists gradually reveal their gang affiliations, like Jody Breeze and Soldier Boy, who oddly enough, Soldier Boy actually pledged his allegiance to the gangster disciple. Can't playing on this endo, blowing on the endo, endo per As we all know by now, Soldier Boy is apparently a Fruit Town Pyro member. Another day, and you know. That's Compton, though. Yeah. You're not Bom from Compton? I am from Bompton. You from Compton? Yeah, I'm from Bompton, yeah. I thought you were from Mississippi somewhere. Nah, nah, I'm from Bompton. I'm from California, Bompton. How? What you mean, how? Where you from? South Carolina? Yeah, yeah. How you from there? I was born and raised there. <laughs> okay, believe that. You was born in Compton? No, nah, I was born in Chicago. I'm so confused. <laughs> in the year 2013, February 23rd to be exact, a rising hip hop Atlanta superstar was making a name for himself in the shadows. Now, after linking with Atlanta rap tycoon Gucci Mane, young Jeffrey Williams, AKA Young Thug, would present his affiliation to the world. But. Young Thug didn't dress like your traditional blood. Mm -mm. Oh, no, 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 no. Young Thug, in the start of his career, as we all know by now, was wearing cheetah prints and skinny jeans. And he had even actually taken a step more zesty and started wearing dress. Yes. It was a very positive uh, procedure. 
And it was kind of, it was a little frustrating too because um, you wanted it out. It was, yeah. Earlier. <laughs> I was like, I want to put it out on, on my birthday as a gift for my fans, but I also wanted to do it the right way. So uh, <clears throat> this is this cover I did probably like four days ago. It's already edited, edited and everything. This is the cover that I wanted to use, the cover that, cover that I had the first time. I, I really didn't want to use it because it was kind of plain and simple. It was more on, on a, a young thug level. This, 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 well, this is crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. But what, what's the difference between Young Thug and Jeffrey? I'm trying to figure that out. Who are you right now? And what are you doing here? Right now, um, Young Thug, at 12, I was beginning to be Jeffrey. I was Jeffrey at 12. Yes. The young Cleveland Avenue sex money murder blood gang member was wearing a dress. Was he a cross dresser? Is this how they got down in Atlanta? I don't know, man, but just know that he did all of this while banging the beat. Now, for me, I personally did not approve, and I'm sure that no one in the land approved of this. For many years, and I mean many years, the Bloods have reigned superior over the rap game. But the moment the young thug declared his allegiance, it got watered down. Now, don't get me wrong. I like Jeffrey's music. In fact... Thug is definitely one of my most favorite artists of the past 10 years. It's just, man, he got real questionable. Rather, Bloods were going to continue to be on top or not. And not only that, it was blemishing the authenticity of everything. If you're going to do it, do it right. And for a while, man, Young Thug made the South look bad. How are we supposed to take your whooping serious and you're wearing a dress, Blood? It was all bad. June 20th of that same year, 2013, Chris Brown would drop his official music video for his single, They Don't Know, featuring the princess of R&B herself, Aaliyah. Now, on the song, Chris would go on to express how judgmental society can be on people who grew up in unfavorable circumstances and environments. He'd also admit to his wrongdoings that he's not a horrible person and that he, too, is a human. And after the situation with Rihanna in 2009, Chris Brown was outcasted both by the music industry and Hollywood. The music video for Don't Think They Know, Chris Brown will be seen in both a Crip neighborhood wearing blue and a Blood neighborhood wearing red. Now, during the filming of Don't Think They Know, Chris Brown will take a liking and he had feel a sense of brotherhood amongst the fruit town Paru. And at that time, the R&B bad boy had been shunned by the entire industry. The fruit town Paru's would reach out an olive branch for the young singer. And one thing led to another, and Chris Brown was put on with the fruit town Paru's. And ever since then, he been holding it down for the beat team. Now I know. A lot of y'all probably waiting on me to bash Brits Breezy. But honestly, I think his circumstances for joining the gang were like most of ours. No guidance, no family, no love. These ingredients have been turning teenagers into gang members for 30 years. Yeah, these are the ingredients that have been turning teenagers into gang members since the late 70s. And if y'all ask me, Although it was kind of goofy to join a gang that late in his life. Brits Breezy is a member in my eyes. March 18, 2014. After signing the Young Jeezy CTE imprint, Los Angeles, California, Compton, California, actually to be exact, musical recording artist YG would drop his much-anticipated album. One of my favorite albums of his whole entire career, My Crazy Life. YG will give us an inside perspective on how lifestyles that are at play in Los Angeles, California can get dangerous. My Crazy Life would actually be an instant classic with songs like Who Do You Love featuring Drake and My Nigga featuring Rich Homie Quan. Now, from the beginning to the end, and every song on that album would be gold for the listeners. But one song in particular would stand out, and that was Bumpton. After years of the South running the game, it was refreshing to see a West Coast artist have his moment. 
And with the song Bompton, it would give us a real introspective understanding on the gangbanging that is still going on on the West Coast. YG replaced the C in Compton, making it a B for Bompton, and it would actually stir up emotions and cause commotion. Yeah, YG taking a C and making it a B and putting it on his album would actually stir commotion up in the land. Now, while others said that YG album was bumping, others said it was too banged out. And songs like Big and Back being Boo must be one of those songs they were saying was too banged out, man. But one thing for sure and two things for certain, it was refreshing to hear a California artist that hadn't compromised they banging for the fame. At least not yet, man. But uh, before I leave the segment, yeah, I had to give YG his flowers. But I cannot respect the fact that you wore a dress and a wig and makeup for a music video with Tiger. This would all be after YG started acting hella weird and dressing hella funny. YG, you let me down, blood, but I ain't gonna stay on you too long, homie, man. We finna go ahead and move on on. After that, it seemed like the blood affiliations in the rap gang had exploded in the late 2010s. Everywhere you looked, there was a new artist coming out of the woodworks claiming to be a blood. Young Thug and Rich Gang's movement even all claimed the blood affiliations, as well as Lil Yachty, Young M.A., Casanova, Trippy Red, and here we come back to Soldier Boy. Yes, indeed. Even Soldier Boy jumped on the blood band wagon during the Rich Gang years. Now, despite the fact of us all seeing the video claiming he was a gangster disciple from Mississippi, I'm gonna make sure I play that in this video probably twice. Can't playing on this endo, blowing on the endo, endo, perp out the window, cushion the fendo, make a nigga get low, so the tell him you get low, folks. SOD. Soldier Boy would get into an online feud with Fruit Town Pyro member and R&B singer Chris Brown over jumping in Karuchi's comment section. Soldier Boy would let Chris Brown know straight up, I'm from Fruitus, blood. I'm from Fruit Town Paru. And he told Chris Brown on Fruitus, on FTP, on Paru, man, run the fade. Now, ironically enough, this would be the same hood that Chris Brown was from. I ain't gonna do all that jaw jacking so you can write your report, officer soldier. So, I ain't gonna do all this talking. We gonna see. Street niggas know that if you get arrested, you're on probation for a weapon or whatever, all, all that gangsters you're talking about, and you get out less than 24 hours later, you told. Hey, bro. I know bitches that did longer jail time for DUIs, nigga. This niggas out here getting out after holding these water guns. Hey, Chris Brown, you a bitch, nigga. When I see you, I'm gonna beat the fuck out you, nigga. You think you hard because you hit Rihanna, nigga, because you beat Rihanna up, nigga? Do that shit to me, puss-ass nigga. The fuck wrong with you, nigga? You gonna call my phone on FaceTime talking about some, oh, why you liking Karuchi pictures on Instagram, man? Why you liking Karuchi pictures on Instagram? When I see you, I'm gonna catch the fade. I'm gonna knock you out. I'm gonna run. Nigga, this fruit time Paru, nigga, you ain't even good in the hood, nigga. We from the same hood, nigga. I'm bumped, and nigga, when I see you catching the fade, nigga, I'm gonna knock your bitch ass out, nigga. You got me fucked up, nigga. Officer Soldier, what, bitch? I got caught with a Draco in the 30 clip, nigga, and I spent that check for the best fucking lawyers to get me out of jail, pussy ass, nigga. Nigga, I done shot niggas before you see what the fuck on my face, nigga. When I see you, Chris, I'm a bitch ass. And Karuchi don't want you, nigga. She don't want you, you lame ass nigga. Stop snorting so much coke, nigga. Pussy ass nigga. You a fuck hey, nigga. Hey, nigga know bitch. what the fuck going on, nigga. Number one in this bitch, nigga. Stretch guy, nigga. Nigga, fuck Chris Brown, pussy ass nigga. You lame, nigga. You a bitch, nigga. You know what the fuck going on, nigga. Stretch gang in this hoe, nigga. Number one checking in in this bitch, bitch ass nigga. Nigga think he hard because he hit hoes. Bitch ass nigga, I catch your bitch ass in the streets. I'm going to knock your bitch ass out, nigga. Anybody behind you, hoe ass nigga. Ain't I be in your city, pussy ass nigga. 
Swanging and dipping in your motherfucking city with the thook on me, puss ass nigga. Run up on our nizzle talking about that lame ass gay ass shit, I'ma get at you, puss ass nigga. Yeah, and for your information, nigga, number one ain't never been no motherfucking sneeze, puss ass nigga. Take my background, had them young niggas pop up and get at you, weak ass nigga. Lame ass nigga, go get your hoe back, nigga. Hey, you talking about your hoe choosing, nigga. Gang shit, okay, bitch ass. Let me know when you, let me know. Go. Okay, cut it, cut it, cut it. Soldier boy, blah. Pa, motherfucker, room. Time out, cut hey, it, man. You ain't from the hood, none. You ain't came to the hood, none. No, you ain't man. did nothing, none. Stop it, man. 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 Stop it, Free swag and shots of hop out. Hey, man. 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 You know what I'm saying? Niggas gonna do all this motherfucking indicting and fucking snitching and shit. I don't, I, all this shit, you did all this shit just so I wouldn't whoop your ass. AB, we got that boxing gym. I give you three rounds, soldier, three minutes. 30 seconds when that adrenaline run out, you're gonna have to deal with that nigga that been training. Funk Phil! Y'all know what the fuck going on, man. Fruit Town Pop. Yeah, we Pyro. the real ones, too. Yeah, we the real ones. Who ain't from Fruits? <laughs> Who ain't from Fruit Town? Yeah, I'm walking through Brompton right now. I'm in my hood right now, nigga. <laughs> nigga. Fuck Chris Brown talking about, nigga. Fuck Chris Brown, nigga. Pull up in the hood right now, nigga. Catch a fade, nigga. Fuck, nigga. Hey, look. Fruits. Suwoo. Suwoo, 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 suwoo. Holla suwoo, the blood starts swarming. Fuck you talking about, nigga. We out here, nigga, right now. We out here right now, nigga. Real pyros, nigga. Real pyros, nigga. Fuck y'all niggas talking about. Fuck a world, soldier. Fuck a soldier boy challenge. Do the petite challenge. 80,000 on my wrist and bumped him. <laughs> Fuck wrong with these niggas, man. Pussy, nigga. You gotta check in anyway, nigga. Pussy. You got us fucked up, nigga. Talking about you gonna knock my big homie out, nigga. I'm catching face from my big homie Whack, nigga. You dig? And Big Soldier ain't gonna catch no fade because I'm worth too many M's, you dig? Young man, hey, man, young man. Hey, what's going on, man? Nah, young, hey, nigga. They say Soldier ain't from the hood. Hey, hey. They say oh, really? Soldier ain't from the hood. Fuck off me, though. Oh, oh man, man. that's like me, though. What's happening? Soldier Boy would appear to go to the turf of the fruit town Paul rooms yes that nigga soldier boy pulled up to the fruit thus claiming that he was good at any hood only to find out it was quite the opposite now soldier boy would ultimately challenge the fellow Pyro celebrity gang member chris brown to a boxing match and here is where it got weirder whack 100 would make his debut from the background of just being a manager. WAC 100, a member from Pacoima Pyro Bloods, or two peas in a B for short, would state that he was in charge of preparing for this fight. That anything going down with Chris Brown and Soldier Boy was strictly Pyro business. That's for Jackie Dumpson. Check it out now. Well, well, well. Now, uh, I told y'all this fight didn't seem like it was going to happen, and after seeing more moving parts today, the likelihood of this fight actually going through actually diminishes as the days go by. Now, here's the thing, and I'm talking about, of course, Big Soldier versus Briss Breezy. Uh, listen, right? Initially, we heard, and we heard this yesterday, I reported to you guys, right, that the fight was going to be moved from L.A. or Las Vegas to Dubai, right? Supposedly, it was going to be in Abu Dhabi, right? The reason is that they have to go through drug testing and other legal stuff and regulations that would probably prevent this fight from happening 
both boxes are not, they don't have a boxing license, and this is not certified or sanctioned by the boxing committee, and of course, amateur fights, there are rules to that as well, right, so it's a lot of things, a lot of variables going on, so they're gonna move it to Dubai. Now, we didn't hear Floyd say nothing about no Dubai because he went on ESPN first take. He ain't say nothing about no Dubai. Actually, he did not know anything about Dubai. So what's going on? Now, we get to find out there's a third party involved here. And it's not 50 Cent. It's not Mike Tyson because Mike Tyson's only a trainer. And 50 Cent is kind of with Floyd. But we're finding out that uh, WAC 100 OG Blood is now controlling the fight. Now, he actually said in a statement to TMZ, Listen, this is Pyru business, okay? Basically meaning uh, Chris Brown or Briss Brown and, of course, Big Soldier, they're Pyru members. If you don't know, Pyru is some type of a sect of the, the blood gang. And, yeah, both these guys are big, bad blood. So it would be only right that the blood gang deal with the blood gang shit. So he says he is jumping in and he's taking over. You put this on Instagram. He said, it's funny how all you out-of-town niggas is worried about what's what in Cali. One thing I can say is Chris Brown and Soulja Boy live right here in Cali. They moving around with a Cali nigga or two, but you same niggas that's two to 3,000 miles away. Yeah, WAC 100 took it upon himself to take an R&B singer from Tallahassee and a rapper from Gangster Disciples, Mississippi, and say that it's par rule business but one thing i can say yeah and i, and I wouldn't say this prior to because mm. I, I think it's been close to 10 years he's been doing this a rooster i really at this point in time i and i know it probably don't mean nothing to him but i i do now acknowledge him as a power rule at one point in time i thought he was going through something the homies was around him but and he, i'm looking at him his mental state how he moved I definitely acknowledge Chris Brown as a power rule now. And if things couldn't even get worse from there, they could. New Orleans, man, how can I say it? Nobody else can take the cake like New Orleans artist King, man. A YSL reject, a young thug and Lil Wayne impersonator. He would damn near appear out of nowhere vowing that he too was a blood. Now this Man was the most fruity, flagrant, flamboyant of them all, man. And uh, to make matters worse, Young Thug and Birdman blandly ignored his cries and calls. King would make cries and calls in order to join the rich gang. Very embarrassing. Nothing at all came from Artist King. Literally nothing but an embarrassment to the red. Trippy Red, another weird blood. We're getting a back and forth with his label mate that was emerging, yet he hadn't yet found his sound. Now, this was all before he turned into an international sensation. New York rapper Takashi 69 would be accused of misconduct with a minor, leading Trippy Red to basically bully the rapper. Now, the two had collaborated on songs prior to the back and forth, but after 69 got exposed, 6 9 will go to the drawing board to rebrand October 8th, 2017. Takashi 6 9 would be seen surrounded by a sea of red bandanas in his music video, Gamo. 6 9 had gotten together with the nine trade bloods in New York. 6 9 would ultimately pledge his allegiance to the game. Takashi 69 image would change overnight. He went from being a radical raging rocker boy to a complete gangster. Takashi would go on a FU tour, dropping his nuts on the entire rap game as the whole world watched as Takashi and his manager Shadi antagonized every hood in the United States of America. Takashi would take a roll out of his predecessor 50 cents book and he had trolled the whole industry and it seemed like man he was exposed in the rap game i don't know how more disrespectful can i get yg suck my fucking dick stupid your last single before your album came out had four major artists on it you had two chains you had big sean and you had Nicki minaj and i'm yo bro i'm supposed to you supposed to blow me out of the water 
How am I record doing better than your shit? You a whole bum out here. Stop going on radio stations trying to promote your album mentioning my name. That shit is a fucking dub. You a fool. You a dummy. Like, a big-ass dummy. You not... You're like, yo, bro, I see right through you, my nigga. Like, niggas is tired of disrespecting y'all old-ass niggas. Like, do something that... Like, do something about it, my nigga. Like, yo, DJ, hit that shit. Turn that shit up, too. I'm a tutor in boot. This is your last hit. This shit was pretty ass bloods. You know why they don't like me? I'm gonna tell you why they don't like me. They like, yo, this kid got rainbow hair, right? This kid got rainbow hair, got six nines and tattoos on his face, looking stupid, right? He's running with our gang culture. He's running with shoot this, ah, ah, blood this, right? That's the thing, right? They, they're they angry. They're, they're mad. Why? I'm a real blood. I'm a real gang member. Blood, ah. Why is it not working for me? Why is my music career not jumping? Why is he platinum records every week? Why is he selling out shows in different countries every day? Germany, Italy, France, Russia, everywhere in the world. Why is he winning and we're not? We're dirty bloods. Why are we not winning? Why is no one seeing our struggle? Because you're a dirty blood. You're a fucking dirty ass blood. You're fucking not worried about Yeah, niggas out here, blood, blood, blood. Yeah, stupid, dirty nigga. So you're not getting no money. You too worried about this and not feeding your kids. They home hungry, nigga. <laughs> that niggas is crazy. But let's see if these dirty ass bloods is in. And like I said, shout out to all my real rights. This dirty blood nigga still not in here. He probably, like, he know I'm gonna embarrass him. That nigga is crazy. Let, I'm just gonna join somebody so we can talk about it. Oh, anybody wanna join? If you wanna join, just say me, because I'm not gonna go down the shit. If you wanna join, say me. I'm gonna join you in so we can talk about these dirty blonde niggas. I don't wanna bring them up. If you wanna bring them up, you bring them up. I'll tell you how it is. You know what I'm saying? Airline ticket costs $100. It's the shittiest airline, right? Shout out to Spirit. I can't even talk. Shout out to Spirit. It's just not as good as other airlines. They can't fly money. They, yo, bro, they have daughters, like pampers, like girls, like, 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 they have daughters that, like, literally run around. May God bless them, right? May God bless them. They outside hungry. Like, you can see their ribs. You know what I'm saying? Sons running around saying, Daddy, Mommy, I want milk. Like, there's no milk. Our dirty bloods. Dirty bloods that are worried about a nigga with rainbow hair running around here. They're dirty. You know why they don't like me? The Kashi 6 9 would be kidnapped and robbed, only later to find out that it was his own gang. Yes. Takashi's nine Trey Blood members had conspired to rob the artist. Apparently, they got tired of seeing him with so much cash while they sat back broke looking like starving wolves. And his manager, Shotty, <laughs> the one who brought him home, was allegedly blowing his Mexican BBL stacked up. Baby mama, back out. And on November 19th, 2018, after antagonizing the whole rap gang, telling everybody to suck his genitals for a full year and putting bounties on people's heads, Takashi 6 9 and the 9 Trey Bloods would ultimately be indicted on criminal racketeering charges. <laughs> Check it out now. It's all over, people. It's all over. Now, uh, listen, ladies and gentlemen, as we look back on the career of Takashi 6 9 there's a lot of lessons to be learned here, okay? Uh, first and foremost, it's very important to know that a lot of times what make you successful is a lot of times what brings you down. And if you don't understand that, you probably won't understand this whole story. The people that surround you that help build the image that support you is a lot of times what continues and fuels the same thing which brings you down. Hip hop, I keep saying, it's a very hypocritical genre. He's fake, he's fake, he's fake, till you realize maybe he did some stuff, then he's dumb. Now, again, listen, me being in a very peculiar position, because you're going to see this angle, and I'm going to get it out of the way now, right? A lot of people are like, well, act, you were around him, you're cool. 
How could you see your man go down like this? Man, I had a conversation with 6 9 and this was probably in February, okay, in a very dusty Brooklyn apartment, and I said, bro, you know where all this leads. You know how associating yourself with certain people, you know how carrying yourself in a certain way, you know how pushing certain type of things, violence, and you know if you continue that, where that leads, and ultimately, he made a choice. That's not something I could control, okay? Regardless, that's still my friend. I don't care, right? Because my, my friendship with him was not that. My friendship with him was on a one-on-one -on -one level, and I still am friends with him. So while I do this story, I have to explain why people, people are going to say, Yo, Hack, why didn't you prevent it? I can't tell him how to operate on the street level. He only really ever deferred to me for advice in promotion and also career and music advice. Street shit, how they handled beefs, if they wanted to beef, other issues pertaining to the street, believe me, academics was not consulted, nor would my opinion ever be listened to. Now, I had that conversation with him back then because I saw the inner workings of how things were going on around him. However, I'm not the person who could stop anything. I'm not no one's father. I'm only a friend. Gave him the advice back then, and ultimately, he made his own choices. So I'm not here also to cop pleas for him. And if you think I'm going to do that, I'm not. Now, let's get on to the indictment that was on seal today. Takashi 69 was arraigned along with four other people. And the people that you wouldn't know, Shadi, who was rumored to be his manager, Crippy, the guy who got shot at the thing with the, the executive at the restaurant after he beat the case, or not beat the case, but he got off on probation. So the guy who got shot in the stomach, he got charged again. And also, Shadi got charged with 6 9 Now, I'm going to make this short and sweet. Because there's other gentlemen included in this. And they're really trigger men for random shootings. And if you know about 6 9 there's a bunch of shootings that have happened or occurred. Again, at people that he was in problems with. And again, maybe you have not connected to him. However, the cops have connected those shootings to him. Now, let me just go through the charges and I'll tell you exactly what he's facing and what the other guys are facing. But we'll really focus on him, okay? Now, really, the maximum he's facing is life in prison, okay? And it's for, like, a couple of charges, but the main charge is using or carrying a firearm during and in relation to possessing a firearm in furtherance of a crime of violence which was discharged. Basically, a shoot. Okay, now are they saying that he did the shooting, whatever shooting this is in question? No, but they're saying basically he, and this is why it's called a RICO charge. So he was really brought in on a RICO charge, RICO and weapons charge. And the RICO charge has these statues in it to show why it's RICO, right? So they're saying basically somebody did a shooting and they're saying it was a criminal organization thing and they're pinning 6 9 in that criminal organization. They're using 9 Trey Bloods. If you don't know, Trey weighs a slang of 9 Trey Bloods and they're saying 6 9 and the other guys are all a part of 9 Trey Bloods in this incident and we're all complicit to some detail. Now the max he's facing on that is life imprisonment and the minimum if he's convicted is 25 years in prison. Okay, uh, he's also facing for conspiracy, 20 years in prison. He's also facing um, another 20 years for a violent crime in aid of racketeering for another incident. He's facing three years for another racketeering charge. And also, he's facing another life imprisonment charge for another incident where there was shots, or actually not shots, but there was a weapon brandished and it was a robbery. Okay, and that was a different incident, but all these carry a life imprisonment maximum. I guess they didn't learn from Bobby Smurda and the G Stone Crips. Well, as we all know by now, Takashi 69 couldn't take the pressure. He learned quickly that pressure bust pipes to turn you into diamonds, and uh, his pipe had busted. Takashi would go on to spill all of the beans on the whole operation and the inner workings of the nine tray blood. The feds even had a phone tap conversation between Jim Jones and an unnamed man, with Jim Jones speaking on Takashi 69 being super violated. Takashi will go on to detail incidents that took place in court. One incident in particular was when Takashi and the Nine Trey Bloods ran into New York artist Casanova 
at the Barclays Center. I'm on parole. Don't make me hot. <laughs> Why you doing that, huh, champ? You know no damn well nobody ain't shoot at me, man. Everybody in the motherfucking video shoot with my motherfucking sons, nigga. Fuck out of here. I want my money. The Charlos won. The Devon J. won. I want my money. I'm lit. I'm from Philly. Uh -huh. I'm a man. I told this nigga. I said, yo, listen. That nigga Charlo Shrimp is different. Don't fight this nigga, man. <laughs> he jumped out. Run with that nigga, man. He slept at me. He slept my man, dog. It's horrible, man. <laughs> I, think I, feel my, I, think I feel a knockout coming. I feel a knockout coming. I feel a knockout coming. Yo, this how the fuck we mob, man. Trayway shit, man. Jack boy, Jack boy shit, man. The fucking Barclays. Stupid. Fuck boy, all wrong. Where you going? Where you going? Boom, boom, boom. Niggas get that. Niggas started running this shit. <laughs> Niggas said. Niggas said. Straight up. Nigga said, fuck boy, don't run. <laughs> fuck boy, don't run. Where you going? Yeah. Stupid. Yo, yo, his whole squad hit the floor. His whole squad hit the floor, you heard? Whoa. Everybody? Everybody getting shot. Boom, boom, boom. Everybody hit the floor? Everybody hit the floor, blood. A brawling suit. Takashi claims that Shotty instructed nine Trey gang members to open fire on the rival crew. And he did. But nobody was hit. Takashi will be released two years later only to embrace the rat moniker. Crazy. Because upon release, Pacoima Pyru Blood Whack 100 ultimately would decide to take it upon himself to do business with Takashi 69, a man who was solely responsible for locking up an entire set. But here Wack was, a Pacoima Paru blood, front and center defending Takashi 69. Very, very taboo. For those of you who don't know, Wack 100 is also the manager of the game, a Compton Paru. And apparently, Ray J is a celebrity Pyru too, and he also manages him. Very taboo YouTube family for a Pacoima Pyru to be in business with a rat, let alone a rat that just took down a whole set of bloods, man. It is crazy. It was so taboo YouTube family that Pablo Bishop blood member Project Bo would speak on the situation. There ain't no way in hell. The B or the P should be for sale, blood. It's never, it's never happened before. To now, this new generation, this new shit that niggas doing, blood. And I can't even say it's a new generation because this nigga that's doing it, blood old as fuck. Blood's an old ass man and he know better. Blood know better. Blood know better, nigga. The B and the P is not for sale. I don't give a fuck who you is. Or how much money you got? It's not for sale, blood. And nigga, under no circumstances should any blood be fucking with no snitch. Because if you fuck with a snitch, blood, then nigga, nine times out of ten, blood, you snitching too, nigga. Or if you fuck with a snitch, blood, it's just like you snitching, blood. You might as well be snitching because on blood, nigga, you're going to be held accountable for the same shit blood did. Cause whatever blood did that got niggas not fuck with him and then for you to try to go fuck with blood and say fuck what the rest of the car gotta say is foul. That go for anybody. Any blood that try to do it. And yeah, you're right. Every hood do got snitches, blood. Every hood got snitches, blood. Every hood. But I bet you the niggas ain't on the block hanging out with niggas. Not with us. Not with no solid niggas. Damn homies, that's out. We ain't harvesting no snitches, we ain't harvesting no busters, we ain't harvesting no bitch ass niggas, blood. So, um, 
Niggas better get their uh, facts together, blood, because that's out. Nigga, this blood gang for real, nigga. From Pueblo Bishop Bloods, nigga. And nigga, we ain't, nigga, that's out. Nigga. And I know it's a gang of other bloods feel the same way. Nigga, you not finna come up in here and change the dynamics of the gang. Nigga, that's out, blood. Whoop. Now, you two family, man. I don't know. But as y'all all know, good things have to come to an end. Sadly, but surely it does. Sadly, but surely it does. It sucks, it sucks, it sucks. But it does. But don't trip. Part two to this video is about to go up, man. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about the blood fab and hip hop. Did I leave anybody out? I know YNW Melly is supposedly connected to G-Shine Bloods as well via his trial when the mass detective pointed him out to being a certified member of the G-Shine Blood. So uh, y'all be on the lookout for part two to this video to be discussing the Crips like Pop Smoke, Davies. Y'all be on the lookout for that, man. This is Chris McLean Cliff of Cliff World TV. I'm hoping y'all had a good New Year, man. I'm hoping, I'm hoping y'all had a good New Year's Eve night, man. Stay away from them cheeseburgers. Y'all said y'all was going to lose weight. Boys, we're Chris McLean Cliff, man. A Clip World TV. I'm gone. Family. I'm going to need y'all to tap in with my girl here by Honey Man. She is CEO, loctician, beautician, all-around miracle worker out of Spokane, Washington. But if that bag is right, she will fly to you. Now, I'm telling y'all, I have seen her turn some solid tools into dimes. Some solid tools into dimes. Some weight at the back of the line, so you ain't got to wait in line. Said, man, if you need your retwist, if you need your edges laid, if you don't want to go outside looking play, man, because I'm telling y'all, some of y'all, I seen y'all out there last weekend, and you was looking a little crushed. And she do kids here, too. And I seen some of y'all kids' pictures, man. And, hey, man, on picture day, that hair was nappy. So if y'all didn't have nobody to do it here, I'm telling y'all, I'm putting y'all down right now. Hair by honey, your booking done right now. You can't let your appearance be the interference. Don't let your appearance be the interference, I'm telling you. Don't try to lay your edges yourself, it ain't gonna work. Hair by Honey, she is a professional. She does this for a living. Get your book it right now. It might be a line, but for the right dime, you might be able to jump the line. YouTube family, I'ma need y'all to tap in with my boy Mimosa, man, and mobbing with Mimosa and his podcast. Look. If you're in the greater Northwest area and you trying to get exposure, man, and you know you deserve that spotlight and your music really hidden, Mobbin with Mimosa is the place to go. I'm telling y'all, man, he running the multimedia blog site and he'll pull up for the interview. He's been seen on camera with Big Sad 1900 collaborator Lil Booth out in Tacoma and that interview with Ye Ye. He did an interview with XD Stacks, FTFKT, and man, he even got me and BBDL on the interview, man. Listen, if you in the greater Northwest area and you want some exposure, I'm telling you, Vancouver, Tequila, Tacoma, Seattle, Kennewick, Royal Orange, Renton, Belltown, tap in with my with Mimosa, man. He on the rise. I'm letting y'all know, man. He one of my guys. I'm putting a stamp on it. Look out for my with Mimosa podcast and make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Listen, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Don't inbox me any more links. If you in the greater Northwest area and you rap and you make music, I don't want to see no more links. Don't inbox me any more links. I need to see you on Mobbing with Mimosa's podcast. Then I'll pay attention. YouTube family, I'm going to need y'all to check out my boy Arian, man, coming out of California. He a streamer. He's a YouTuber. And he's an artist. Let's just say he's multi-talented. I mean, hey, the boy could be the next Constantinette. Twitch, holla at my boy. Send him a bag. To everybody that be on Twitch, even Discord. Man, y'all need to holla at my boy, Ari Young, man. This the wave of the future. Live streamers are creating a new millionaires. And I got faith in my boy, Ari Young. I mean, he was smart enough to get the promo. Y'all make sure y'all tap into his show, Stay Cloudy. Subscribe to him on Twitch. Area, man, look, he gaming, he doing music, he live streaming, blunt rolling contest, Mario Kart, you name it. Like I told y'all, this the wave of the future, man. 
Now let's jump into the video y'all been waiting for. I'm pimping like I'm done one. I'ma stop at the store, sell me an onion. Go and get some backwoods in the back of Funyun. Let a nigga play me sweet and he gon' meet the honey bun. I ain't ride with it unless he got a hundred round drum. Hit that nigga with the drink, he gon' butt up, but I'm 